Williamson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lukenen certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. Hello again, World Sidecar Motocross fans. We find ourselves in the Czech Republic in Kremlin. This is Nepomuk. The city just outside is the Nepomuk Club, which run the motocross here, and they have been doing it for decades. But the weather here in the Czech Republic has been difficult over the last few weeks, and we're going to have a weekend with a difference, as you will see. The weather conspired against us. These scenes of the pretty town belying the, the conditions that are outside at the motocross track, I can tell you. But we got round four away, and we got two Grand Prix races, which I think you will find thrill you. They certainly thrilled me. The riders found it difficult, but we still found time to look round this very picturesque town. But before we get into the action, let's have a quick snapshot of how the season unfolded so far. We kicked off in Portugal over the sunny skies of Alquiadal. Everybody full of hope and expectation, it's a fast track. Even Jorge Viegas, the FIM president, was there. But the Latvian twins, Leo Bardis, jumped on top of the box and carried the red plate for the first time. Quite a thing for these youngsters and their season was on track really. Head in the deep sand you would have thought would have been the home of Kuhn Hermans and Ben van den Bergard, and that was the case to a large extent. But the young Latvians fought well there as well, retained the red plate despite great opposition from everyone else. Good rides all round in Herder. Once again, the Latvians were on top of the box. Moving to France, though, there's going to be a bit of a change in the scenery for them, a different type of track, home ground, for the Prunier boys, the French champions, and would you believe it, the French champions reign supreme. Marvin Van Lukenen and Glenn Janssens waiting patiently in the wings, uh, their turn would come. But it was overall victory for the Prunier brothers on home soil. Then at Kremlin, we had plenty of time to talk to people as it turned out. Benny Weiss and Patrick Schneider have committed to the whole season this year. And I think, Benny, you must be quite pleased with it so far. You've delivered some good results. Yeah, the, the start of the season was good. Um, the last races, we had a little bit of bad luck um, because of flat tyres in Plomio. But yeah, the riding is good and, and we are looking forward to the next race. How did you pull yourself together to do a complete Grand Prix in France after an episode like that? Strong mind? Um, yeah, I think uh, from home my dad helps me a lot with being mentally very strong already since I've been very small. So uh, yeah, um, I have good people behind me, very strong team. Um, they are very lovely to me and I have a lot of friends and everything that help me. And yeah, I think also it was easier for me to be able to write than to example sit at home or anything so yeah it was better to race than to not race how do you find the Kremlin track you've obviously like all of us been here several times yeah it's i think the third or fourth time that i'm here and uh, yeah it's, it's it's a good track fast track nice jumps uh not too big jumps but uh yeah the track is good stefan how are you feeling about the start to your year would you say it's one of your better starts uh yeah yeah, it, uh, all things come together with Han. Uh, we train a lot this winter and uh, yeah, the riding is going well. We train in Spain. Um, every week we got some bike time, so um, yeah, good start. Well, here at Kremlin, after a heavy night of rain and nearly an unrideable track, we've had to take the decision to cancel proceedings on Saturday. I'm here with the FIM race director, Dave Edwards. Dave, that's a tough decision, but it's one that has not been taken lightly. Yeah, thank you, Barry. It's, uh, it's never taken lightly. We always like to run to the programme uh, to keep the schedule running, not only for the riders, the teams, the sponsors, um, but for everybody involved. The spectators are here to watch the event. This is unfortunate, but uh, we believe the best decision has been made. 
um, for today. The racing will continue for tomorrow. Um, we have a rescheduled program which has gone out, um, but unfortunately today has been cancelled, as you say. Yeah. And we have to make the point, don't we, that it's totally democratic. Everybody was consulted from the teams all the way through to the officials, the organisers and the promoters. Yes, for me it's never an easy job. Um, I have to make a decision that's based on all the facts, not just ones that are in my head that I think I've done the right decision. We speak, we've spoken to the medical, we've spoken to the marshals, the teams, the, the organiser um, and also the riders as well, which we take on board. Um, again, it's, it's the overall decision which counts and it makes it safe and it makes it fair for everybody. Yeah and if there's one over overriding victim in this of course it, it's the club because this is the second year that they've had an unfortunate set of circumstances. Yes unfortunately this is uh, for, for me is, is it upsets me really because they they put a lot of effort in here um, and they deserve a good event so hopefully with the new program we've uh, made for tomorrow we can make it a successful Grand Prix for them and obviously make things a lot better. We'll all be up bright and early with a good chance of getting a good day's racing. The weather prognosis is better, so come on, onwards and upwards. Yeah, for sure. The, the weather programme is looking better by the hour, so hopefully by tomorrow we'll be good and we'll have a good event. Brilliant. Well, well done, and I wouldn't be in your shoes for all the tea in China, mate. Thank you very much, Bray. Thank you. Well, we're here looking at the track... Uh for a different purpose actually because we've taken the decision here or the decision has been taken to cancel the event. Gert van Verven, the riders representative, is with me and he was involved in that process. Gert, tell us a bit about the, the backstory, the feeling from the teams about the conditions here. Uh, yeah, you, you can see the, the track is uh, quite wet uh, but it's still uh, uh, quite a hard pack track. Uh, but this morning uh, yeah, we had a discussion with the FIM and also the club uh, what to do about today and uh, they want to do a free practice uh, and then to see what happens. But yeah, for me as a kind of riders presenta presentator and also uh, yeah, to have the experience here a little bit more about the track, you can see that uh, the amount of work that the mechanics will have uh, during, after training or qualifying, whatever, uh, with these conditions, it's, it's really heavy. And then you saw a lot of riders teams were packing up together, talking, 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 but nobody would make the decision. So I called them together and we made uh, an unanimous decision that we will cancel today and uh, uh, that we will do right tomorrow because uh, the lot of work, effort what goes on, uh, if it starts raining today a lot more. Which is going to. Which is going to, yeah. then it will be... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really heavy and I don't think it will be better for the races for tomorrow. And we're at the very highest point of the track here. Yeah, yeah. So, so down there you can only imagine, can't you? Down the bottom there, when you come along the bottom and there's a left turn and a steep hill up, that will be unrideable. Uh, I think, yes. But also, because if you go downhill now, there are so so thick ruts. What's now, is, it's, uh, yeah, the sand is gone, it's only stones. And also uphill, there's so many stones, so it makes it also quite dangerous for us. And I don't want to have a, a crash or a, a something else, what makes it even worse. So if we can do it uh, not riding today, and they can work a little bit on the track, because by the end of the day it will be drier. Tomorrow, they say also say the weather forecast will be better. So if they can smooth up the track then a little bit, then I think we have tomorrow two good races instead of maybe no race. I think it's important also to make the point that yes the riders were uncomfortable with the idea but it's been a totally democratic decision between yeah. the promoter the organizers and you have to feel sorry for the organizing yeah, club don't you this, because I, they're not lucky here are they? I started my discussion that I, I don't want to have a fight with club I don't want to have a fight with the FAM but I speak about to all the riders and, and sometimes you need to step up to, to take the podium and, and to, to ask everyone. So I called them a by old number and everybody unanimously decided no, we're not riding. So and then it's, yeah, how do you say it? I think it's a fair square deal. And I think the FIM also with Dave, they said, yeah, it's, it's maybe it's the best decision we, we can make. If all the riders does it, then it's okay. Yeah, and tomorrow everybody knows that when they go out, they, they sink or swim and points are at stake and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Simple as that. Simple as that. You don't break your bike for nothing. No, because. and if it's, it, I know, me can happen also something in, in warm-up, so I don't qualify. That's, that's the risk we take. 
but sometimes I think for the amount of work, what the mechanics and everything will have also in the whole team today, yeah, it's too much. Well. well, there you have it. That's the decision. No qualifying on Saturday. It's better to race tomorrow and know there are points there. Yeah, definitely. Tomorrow are, are points again. Yes, or uh, we will try to fight again for the red plate. In France, there was a spectacular crash which looked as though the power of the Mega turned you upside down, but you actually touched Marvin's rear wheel, yeah? Yeah, I made a small mistake. I touched Marvin's rear wheel, so he gives gas, and we also the front goes up and I give gas, so it was, yeah, we go over the top. Have you ever had that situation before? Because it was so quick. No, we had never had that, but yeah, it was a first for us. What about this Kremlin track? Do you feel at home here? Do you like it? Yeah, definitely. I've been here two times. One time with Kostas Baleckas, and yeah, last year it was cancelled. But yeah, I haven't ridden here in mud, but I think it will also be a good race. The decision to cancel this weekend was basically a rider's decision. You support it. Yeah, definitely. They came, came to me and asked me. Yeah, yeah, I agree with it. There's no need to mess up the bike today. Yeah, we can do it tomorrow. Good luck. It's going to be fun. Eh? Yeah, thank you. Having already spoken to Kuhn Hermans about the excitement of coming here to Kremlin with a red plate, we thought it might be nice to talk to Ben van den Bogart about the fact that nothing's happening on Saturday. A popular decision for you? Um, that is cancelled today? Yeah, um, like you see now, the weather is dry, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been raining a, a lot here. And uh, I think to save the track or to, um, yeah, to save uh, the conditions to work on the track on, on today, it will be better for tomorrow. And I think, uh, I hope that if we are lucky with, with a little bit of good weather, then we have uh, nice races tomorrow. You've been around a long time, Ben, and you've been in this situation before, and it's better to get one solid day where you can score points than risk ruining the bike for nothing. Yeah, exactly, and also for the track. When, um, when it's not ridden, everything's flat, and when it's ridden, the rods are in the, in the corners, and if it starts to rain then, then it's a real disaster. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, the commission made the, the best decision to, to cancel today and everything on uh, Sunday. When I spoke to Kuhn, Kuhn earlier in the weekend, he, he basically admitted that Kremlin is a track he really likes. So you have high expectations, whatever the conditions. Yeah, of course, uh, it's a fast track. Last year we showed on the Saturday already that we were really fast here. Um, so yeah, we are very uh, excited to ride here. Um, yeah, the weather is not, not, not the best uh, at the moment, but uh, yeah, we're looking forward to have two Good, solid races on Sunday. You must be looking forward to racing here at Kremlin because I know it's a track that Marvin goes very well on. You've been here before? Yes, I rode here uh, several times. Uh, but yeah, now it's the first time with Marvin. And uh, yes, I'm looking forward. You agree with the decision to cancel today because it, it was really, really wet. It seems to be the right thing to do. Yes, I think so. Uh, after all, it, it would uh, be a lottery today, uh, so maybe it's the right decision. OK, looking forward then to tomorrow, given the conditions, and we don't know what they will be, but and the competition, where are you aiming for? Obviously a podium. Yes, of course, we go for the podium. Uh, in the best way, we, we would gain some points uh, on the top, but uh, yeah, at least we have to go for the podium. Well, I wish you luck. You, you've done a great job. I have to say, jumping in at the speed you're doing after a year and a half, nearly two years off. Are you surprised or are you pleased? Oh, I'm pleased. Um, yeah, we have to work hard for it in the winter. And uh, yeah, I have to say I'm happy with, uh, with the form I have uh, and we together. So uh, yeah, I'm very pleased. Brilliant. Good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Well, opening race then. And uh, this is how they line up, just the two races, the qualifying, their positions were decided from the morning warm-up, and that's it, that's all they've had, just a few laps of this track, and would you believe it, coming to the line, it started to rain. Herman's Vice, Van Luca Lillebardis, Prunier, Lefric, Pruma has been going well, Gordiev, Sanders, uh, Gert van Verven rounding out the top ten. It has been tricky here, I can tell you. The conditions are just as bad on race day, and it is raining. Stefan Wise, Jason Vandala, Vekoda, 
best of the Czechs, Willemsen with Jens Vincent alongside, Visseling, Blank, Weinman Brothers, Wilkinson, Joe Millard, having a bit of a miserable weekend so far, not making the best of the warm-up time, Elika and Bendau Pasquier completing the top 20. 32 crews made it through here, and there the rest of them, Patrick Pengster and Selena Jan there in 23rd, the only lady competing this weekend. And is it going to be hard for her in the mud? Well, maybe not. It's uh, a little bit easier, possibly, but not much. Well, it's the morning, and uh, the writer's presentation took place in dry weather, everything looking good. So, looks good so far. But when we got to the start line, the weather started again. The rain came down, and it was looking bleak and miserable. Were we going to have a good race? You betcha. You just wait and see. Kramlin always delivers rain or shine, and boy, was it raining. The gardening, not really up to much. More paddling in the mud. Dave Edwards there with the flag. Race one, seconds away. Here we go then, Kuhn Hermans right over on the far left of your picture. Then Marvin Van Nuken just a few places inside. In the middle of the bunch, we can see the number 17 of Tim Bruma, Jason Van Dahl a bit further down. Sanders right in the middle there. 15 seconds, five seconds, we're getting close now. Look at the state of the start-finish straight. It is raining hard, and away they go. Kuhn Hermans left at the gate. Kuhn Hermans and Benny Weiss left at the gate. And that's Tim Pruma. Tim Pruma, Ronald Labreton with Davy Sanders. Marvin Van Lucre in third place, sweeping round the outside of the bed. The Prunier boys. And then it's Leo Vardis in fifth. Daniel Leo Vardis in fifth. But race leader, the whole shot kid again. Tim Pruma. And Rodolf Labreton Why? Look how they filled in Davy Sanders from the word go. So there's so much wet and muck already on the track from a downpour this morning just before they got the race underway. Bilbard is there, the Prunier boys. Flush with victory in Plomion. What a result they had there, the French champions. Marvin Van Luke and Glenn Janssens are chipping away in the title chase. They're edging ever closer to the top of the table. But Tim Brum and Rodolphe Le Breton, with a, a couple of DNFs this year, have got work to do because they are sitting in the lower order of the points. But this is a very, very good start for them in Kremlin. The German-French pairing. On the smaller Husky, the big KTM they used last season has been forsaken for a lighter engine, but it cracked a piston. Uh, last time out in Plomion, and they failed to finish a race, which you can ill afford to do in a season, albeit 10 Grand Prix and 20 races. Nobody wants to give away points. Kuhn Hermans and Ben van der Bogart are giving away points now because they are stuck on the gate. And can they get back into the proceedings? Well, I can tell you they have got going. So they've got going, no sign of Brett Wilkinson and Joe Millard yet. They had a sluggish start. Prima leads. Davy Sanders, Jano Stegmans, and the interview with Jano Stegmans at the top of the program. Uh, you might be a bit puzzled what the content was, but I can tell you, uh, before Plomion driving to the track, he was, oh, there's a massive crash. Who's that? Down on the ground, can't see the number. Nobody can see the numbers on the outfits of the light, lower order. But Jonas Stegmans was hit by a lady in a car with great impact and his van was almost written off. So that was a big shock, but he went on to Plomion to compete. That's what that interview was all about. Tim and Seb Leffrink there in the red, in about sixth place. Second place for Sanders. Number nine, good start for Davy Sanders. Has had an injured left leg, quite a serious injury in and around the knee and thigh area. Uh, I think the ligament became detached or something. I'm not too sure about that, but it was a tricky injury, and he's doing very, very well. It, 
it prohibited his movement on the bike, but now he's moving very well. In the mud here, looking good. Look at the conditions and how deep the ruts are. Snaking their way through. You maybe have to explore the odd different line here because if you come up behind back markers and they're in the deep stuff and they get stuck, then it's game over. Hermans and van der are chipping away. Oh, Benny Weiss and Patrick Schneider got going as well. But the Zabel has cried enough on that right-handed bend. That's a shame. They're um, favourites of ours. Race leaders, Prumer, Le Breton, Sanders, Stegmans, Van Lukener, Janssens, Prunier. Look at Davy Sanders with Marvin Van Lukener. So you've got two all Belgian crews there scrapping it up. That's a quick line Van Lukener has got. He is fast here. And Glenn Janssens, what a passenger he's turned out to be in this season. After so long out of the sidecar, virtually two years, certainly 18 months, wouldn't have done a great deal of training. He's done it. Uh, what's that? Who is that? That's Hermans has stopped for a second time. Bruno Hermans and Ben van der Burgart had fought up to 14th place. So they were in the points as Adrian Petter and Joel Hoffman, the number 20 crew, go past them. They were lucky to get out of the rut. So Hermans and Ben van der Burgart stuck again. So it looks like it's going to be game over for them in this opening race. Yep, how dejected do you want to feel? That is desperately, desperately sad for them. Such a sorry sight. Jason Van Dala, Lert van der Poot of the 723 crew. They trip off the tongue very easily because they've been so good and so productive, but Hermans and van der Bogart's bike stuck right in the middle of the track there. There's not an absolute sausage they can do about it because it's well and truly stuck. Almost double the weight with that amount of mud in it, I would have thought. So fat chance they'll have of lifting that one out. Look at the race leaders. Number 17 supreme at the front. Tim Pruma and Rodolphe Le Breton. Down the bottom there into the left-hander. Then they go along these ruts. Deep ruts as well. And then away down the back. Over the jump and down the hill. Right down to the left-hander at the bottom. Deep ruts again coming through. Has Kuhn Herman's bike been moved? Yes, apparently so. And now up to the hill and over the brow here. And they're looking good here. The clock has stopped. We're on to the penultimate lap, I think, just about. Or if not, it's imminent. Tim Kruber on his way here to a debut Grand Prix race win. It's been coming, and they've been building their race endurance, their reliability. Last year, they were prone to fading a bit in the closing stages. That is not happening here in Kremlin in these abysmal conditions. But look at the track. It's dry underneath. It's cut through into some dry stuff. The crowd know what this means to Tim Prumer and Rodolphe Le Breton, the young man who cut his teeth with his father, riding with his father in the French National Championship. For about seven or eight years they rode as a father and son pairing. And then moving on to the big stage with Daniel Willemsen and Rodolphe Le Breton. That was the highlight of his career until now. He and Tim Prumer have teamed up and are absolutely flying. They're on their final lap and they're on their way. Not far now, just this left-hander, the checkered flag, is on their left as they come over the top of the hill and it will be victory in race one there it is the man in the yellow the check and fly for Pruma and Le Breton fantastic result for Tim and Ronald second place has Davy Sanders held off Marvin Van Lukener who was right on his back wheel for a while but then got gapped Sanders has held it Davy Sanders Marvin Van Lukener brings it home in third so Sanders and Stegmans, Van Lukener and Janssens. Confirmation of that, Prumer, Sanders, Van Lukener. Prunier, it was, got the better, better of Lille Bardis. They fought them off. Lefrinks held on to six. Jason Van Dala, Gordiev, Van Verven, Stefan Wires, rounding out the top ten. Big points for everybody, except Kuhn Hermans and, indeed, 
Brett Wilkinson. Brett Wilkinson had a miserable race, couldn't get the thing going, had problems with a misfire, electronics, maybe water, who knows. Glenn Janssens, third place in race uh, one in Kramolin. Uh, how was the feeling on the heavy conditions on the track? Yeah, indeed, and uh, again a third place. Uh, well, the feeling was, was uh, okay, but uh, I know from start to finish on third place, uh, it's hard to overtake uh, with these conditions. So, yeah, you know, you have to be con consistent. Uh, we are again uh, third, so I think we can be happy. And what about Davy Sanders? What a class act. Best career result in the race in heavy condition in Czech Republic in Kramolin. How are your feelings right now? Yeah, finally I have a good result this year. They say always uh, some weeks and months ago you need a good start. Finally I have a good start and I uh, finish on second place. I'm uh, super happy uh, also uh, with uh, the first uh, year with Jarno. Race one, Czech Republic, Kramolin. First race win for Tim Prümer. What about it? Uh, finally took a long time, got a good start. Uh, I think in this weather condition it's very important. Also on the track it's not easy to overtake. But we can open a gap, keep it cool and yeah, it was a great race. Very happy. And sensational too. Well deserved. Welcome back to Nepomuk in Kremlin. Uh, we've got race two ahead of us, but just before we do that, let's reflect a little bit on some of the beautiful places that we get to visit on our jaunts around Europe. Well, call it a jaunt if you like. Yes, okay, then last night we went to see a girl band called Holki, which was the Czech Republic's equivalent to the Spice Girls back in the day. Very entertaining it was. So a little bit of play, but mostly it's work, and it's quite a lot of work following this FIM World Cycle Motocross Championship around Europe. But I'm privileged to do it. We're all a good team. We all pull hard together, just as the riders do and the teams out at the track who are now preparing themselves for the second race. The weather here has been difficult. We've had to compress everything into one day. And it's entertaining. Once as well on the program, and it's been a busy, busy schedule. But we thought it fitting to just reflect and have a look round the scenery in this lovely area in the Czech Republic. The people are welcoming, the food is excellent, the beer, well, what can I say? It's a country of beer. And the music, well, just look at this, sit back, get calm, because it won't be calm much longer. Race two ahead of us out at the track and uh, the conditions a little bit better. The rain has eased off. The track has been worked on and uh, preparation is done. So we're looking forward to a really, really good race. The riders are apprehensive. There's work to do for some of them, as you saw. Hasn't been a good weekend for some, but it's been a brilliant weekend for others. Not much of a crowd here, sadly, but hopefully our live stream is reaching you wherever you are. Well, from qualifying, we have morning warm-up, and this is the times that they set, or these are the times that they set to gain their gate position. Kuhn Hermans, Benny Weiss, Van Lukener, Lille Barnes, Brunier, Leffering, Brumer, Race winner in race one, Tim Prumer, Rodolf Le Breton, Gert Gordiev Sanders, and Gert Van Verven completing the top ten. Highly, highly competitive race one in dreadful weather conditions. Stefan Wise, Jason Van Dala, Vekoda, quickest of the Czechs, Daniel Willemsen, Jens Vincent on board this week due to an injury for to Mikael Gabor. Visseling, Tobias Blank, Adria Petter, Walter, Hengster, Salini are the only lady taking place. Sven Bob and his brother from Switzerland. Welcome. Devil Dare, the young French, Hoffman, Burman, Van der Lagerbach, Chanteloup, George Kinch and Scott Graham completing the lists. Two reserves. Gommerman and Hentrick.
Well, the teams have had about two hours to pressure wash their bikes, get everything cleaned up and ready for race two, and the conditions are much drier. The track in the opening race dug out so that there was some dry stuff underneath, but it has made it really a one-line track. If you go off the beaten track to pass, you're risking fate. But they're clean, they're ready to go, they're all excited, and so... Are we? Race two is coming up. Brett Wilkinson and Joe Millard have work to do. This is it then. How do they line up? Let's have a look across. Where's Van Lukele? Well, he's away on the left-hand side. That's the quickest line as you look at it. 15 seconds. 15 seconds ahead of these, these guys. And one young lady out there, Selena Young. Hats off to her. This is a tough, tough sport. But this is going to be a drier, harder, faster race and less of a lottery. Heads down. Punches feather. Away we go then. And from the left-hand side, it's Coot Hermans. Coot Hermans and Ben van der Bogart sweep into an imperious lead. Followed by the Neil Vardis boys, Tim Brimmer was fourth. Who was Sir Marvin Van Luken and Glenn Janssens in third place? There's Tim Brewer, Jason Van Dala, just on the right-hand side of your picture. But it's Kuhn Hermans. Oh, got stuck. That's a deep hole there. Van, Van Luken had got stuck. There were two lines there as well. Momentarily, team's getting bogged there. And somebody gives them a punt and away they go. Tim Brewer, Ronald Le Breton. Well, you can see how much the conditions have dried out, but it has made it a one-line track. The center of it being the safest place to go. Benny Weiss there in the orange and black. They had issues last time out. Leal Vardis will be looking to make amends here. Already in a red plate reclaiming position. With Kuhn Hermans and Ben van den Bogart falling foul on the opening race and scoring zero points. Likewise, Brett Wilkinson, Joe Millard scored zero points. They've got an electrical problem, and I don't think they've managed to get to the line or at least get away when the gate dropped. So it, it will be a miserable journey home for the British crew from Kremlin back to the south coast of the UK. Van Lukena and Glenn Janssens. Davy Sanders didn't get away so well that time, so he's battling up from what looked like 8th position, roughly. We'll get some captions rolling across the bottom once the timing screens kick in at the conclusion of the opening lap. Kuhn Hermans, Ben van den Bogart, Daniel Bruno, Leal Vardis, Marvin van Lukena, Glenn Janssen, that should top three. And Van Luken are doing everything he needs to do to edge closer towards retaining his title. Tim Bruma, Rodolfo Le Breton. If they get a better ride here and improve from fourth, they are on for overall Grand Prix victory. Oh dear, Adrian Petter, Joel Hoffman. Premature end to their day. Seven minutes of racing gone before we see any flags come out. So Adrian Petter's day is over here at Kremlin. Everything compressed into race Sunday. Kylian Emon Prunier, winners in France, overall winners in France. What a fabulous, fabulous weekend it was for them. Tim and Sam Leffrink, number 75, in the red. Here they come. During my time with this championship, I've seen old stagers exit from the top of it, and I've seen new young talent come into the bottom of it, and we are looking at two of those teams right now. It's so good to know that the sport is alive and well, at least at the world level. With young blood coming into the series and giving us the sort of entertainment we've become used to seeing with the likes of Etienne Bax and Daniel Willemsen and Stuart Brown, of course, uh, from the UK. No longer competing at world level, but my goodness me, the most successful Right. Oh, what? Hermans? What am I talking about? Hermans van der Berger stuck there on that corner. And something is jammed in the front in the front end. Something has happened. Whether it's a suspension unit, I cannot see because spectators are in the way. Frantically, they are trying to free something. 
The wheel won't go round, so something is jammed in between the tyre and the back of the loop. Oh! Goodness me! So, Daniel Neil Barnes, Daniel Bruno Neil Barnes, with Van Lucano right on their tail now, are race leaders. Marvin Van Lucano. Well, his title defence is right back on track. But Daniel and Bruno Leobardis are in the pound seats to reclaim the red plate that Kuhn Hermans and Ben van der Berger have held for just one meeting. And they're stuck. These guys are not stuck, far from it, but it's loose now. There's even a bit of dust kicking up and some big stones in there, and you can see, and that's obviously the problem with Kuhn Hermans. Nilbardis and Nilbardis twins. They have come of age, not literally, they're still 17. I think they, from memory, they turn 18 in July. And we're not there yet. Just look how that rut is kicking out. Van Lucan are here with his family. You might have seen earlier little Bentley. Such a happy little boy. It's lovely, as I say, I quite often say, so lovely to see the families so much a family sport a bigger crowd this time on the gallery and on that bend where Hermans is still stuck and his hopes I can't believe that whatever is stuck there cannot be free now Ben van der Bergart's got a big piece of wood finally to try and dislodge whatever it is has become become jammed in their front wheel I can't believe it. I can't believe you can't rock it backwards and just leave that obstruction out of the way. But the race at the front. 15 minutes gone and 15 minutes before the final boards come out, which gives Kuhn Evans and Ben van der Berger a little bit of time to catch up. Oh, that's another line for Marvin van Luke, and He's got to look for alternatives there, just in case these boys get stuck in the deep stuff. But he's doing everything he needs to do. Can he wind them in? We're at half race distance on the clock. Back markers ahead. And this is going to be tricky getting into the second half of this race. That's Jan Horman and Andy Schlinitz, German-Belgian combination. The first to be caught by the leader. Ah, Hermans van der Bergart now running. The white shirt's going away from you. Christian Hendrick, Simon Lenz there, stuck as well. But race leaders, Daniel and Bruno, Neil Barnes, 101. Red plate will be on them when we go to Poland. And still Van Lucan and Glenn Janssen's battling. Look how deep the ruts are now. They bottom out. You need ground clearance on these outfits. And certainly there is ground clearance. Long travel suspension, of course. Very long travel suspension, in fact. And boy, don't you need it. Especially over jumps like that. Still the gap, though. I think Leal Bardis has pulled the pin just a little bit. We're into the closing two minutes now before we see a two and a one lap board. And we're watching the race leaders. Let's just watch the action. Cannot take my eyes off the screen. I'm not going to look at the timing screen and I'm not going to look at the captions running across the bottom. That's for you to work out the numbers. You're watching two young men then. Sirius leaders on their way again deep run on the inside van lucana following the leader left himself plenty of space to get all oh, they got that a bit crossed up that's uh, brett wilkinson and joe millard just about they've got going finally but they are out of the points i can tell you that whatever gremlin it was they've cured it momentarily they've got a busy schedule just watch this van lucana now right with leal bardis Taylor's round the outside. Neil Barnes cannot put a foot long. We're off foot wrong. We're on the final lap here with Van Lucan a breathing down his neck. Neil Barnes with a back marker ahead of him. Two back markers in actual fact. Coming up to lap. Van Lucan is right on his tail. Oh, look at that, they got that wrong, they got it wrong, nearly over, nearly over, got him sideways, what happened there, but Van Lucan has gone, jumping back in, Bruno departed the scene here, oh, drama on the last lap, 
and victory from this race has gone. It looks like Van Lugel and Glenn Janssens, and at that moment in time, Tim Prumer was on for overall victory because Tim Prumer is in third place. And if Leo Barnes takes victory here, then Tim Prumer will be the overall winner. But as it happens, Van Lukela and Glenn Janssens are on their way. Uh, over comes Wilkinson and Millard. Van Lukela and Janssens victory in race two. And overall Grand Prix victory. Oh, Leo Barnes boys got caught up with the tailenders but they did get it crossed up as well. So, uh, and over comes Kuhn Hermans. Oh, dejected, dejected. Consolation from Ben van der Bogart for his driver. But dear me, what a fantastic ride for Tim Prumer and Rodolphe Le Breton. Here they come. An outstanding overall result. And there is that overall result. Joint on points, but Van Lukena gets the overall verdict over Tim Prumer and Rodolf Le Breton, denying the German his first overall GP win. But he's had a race victory, there'll be more to come. Leal Bardis then third. Sanders, Prunier, Van Dala, Leffering, Gordier. This has shaken up the table. Daniel Willemsen, Stefan Wires in the top ten. Good ride, boys. Go Van Verven. Uh, was he one of the lapped riders? Don't know. Vakoda, Weiss, Visseling, Erlika, Petter, Weinman, Double Dare, and points all the way down. George Kings gets one. Uh, your best result in your career, second place overall in Kramolin. What to say about it? Best result yet. <laughs> no, it was pretty good. Uh, we had a great ride. Track is really nice. Uh, I think it was the best decision to ride not on Saturday and today. Yeah, great, great ride, great track, great team. Thank you to all the fans who come here. It was pretty good, yeah, thank you. Well, Daniel, so you lost the first place in the last round. What happened? Yeah, the lappers, they, every time also in the first, lap, uh, first race, in the second race, yeah, every lapper, they look and yeah, just keep going in the fast line. When Verven especially, it's the last lap. Yeah, and he looks and he just keeps going, yeah. So we lost the the place because of the lappers. Yes. Okay, now it looks like you are disappointed because of the third place on the GP, but at the end it's a good result, so how did it feel right now? Yeah, we are happy that we in the second race got a good start, second place, yeah. Then something happened to Hermann, yeah, we make a pass. Yeah, we could have done better in the first race, yeah, but this is, I think, the best we could do now in this GP. Yeah. We are happy now we got back the red plate and we will try to keep it. Marvin, overall win in Kramolin after beating Lerbaris on the track in the last lap. How does it feel? Yeah, for sure, uh, yeah, very good, finally. We had some uh, yeah, small problems every race and uh, now everything uh, fall together. So. We were really happy. Uh, Will Bardis make a mistake last lap with a slow rider. So we we pushing all race and uh, yeah, it resulted in the overall win. And yeah, we are very happy with the whole team. Uh, we worked so hard and uh, yeah, thanks to everyone. You are closing the gap slowly to to the red plate. So what's the plan for Poland? Yeah, for sure. We we only push and uh, we will do do this till the end. And, yeah, uh, Red Plate is uh, not far away, but yeah, it's uh, still a long season, so week by week, and uh, we do just our best. Uh, yeah, uh, it was a little bit a stressful week uh, of the team. Benny, the mechanic, his mother was uh, died on Wednesday, so I was not sure if he can come with us, but he did, and uh, so the overall win is uh, for Benny, his mom. Well, what a race it's been. And uh, here we are, that's shaking it up. Three points to gap now, Van Luken a trails Leal Bardis by Prunier. Hermans drops to fourth, but still very much in touch. It is a long season, we move from here to Poland. Brett Wilkinson, Joe Millard slip to fifth, but they're 18 points clear of Tim Brummer, who's now hitting form at the right point of the season. Leferink, Van Dala, Stefan Wires, and Davy Sanders moves into the top 10. A bit of ride for him in Kramlin, and they're recovering from injury as well. So, looking forward to Poland now in two weeks' time. 
but this is going to be a cracking, cracking season. Can Kuhn Hermans get some reliability and some good luck to close that gap at the top again? Having held the red plate briefly, it now sits with the Lille Bardis boys. Gert van Verven heading out the next group of riders. Weiss, Weinman, Gordiev, Dan Foden, sadly, now retired due to no passenger. Certainly for the time being, anyway. Let's hope he comes back. George Kinch in the top 20, chipping away ahead of Willemsen. And this weekend, it was Jens Vincent on board. Tom van der Lagerbach. Not riding like we've seen him ride in previous years. Don't know what the problem is? We'll find out. Mulders, Boss, Adrian Petter, and the rest of the guys. It's well supported, this championship. Loyal, loyal fighters in there. Every one of them. What will Poland throw up at us? Well, it has been an amazing, amazing weekend here in the Czech Republic. All compressed into one day. Let's hope the weather's better. Topsy-turvy weather in Europe. Poland then in two weeks' time. Join us again. From me, Barry Nutley. Thanks for watching us and catch us on the live stream. Some men we'll see you in Poland. Laid out before them and ask why. I dream of a path that never was and ask why not. We never stop. So go on when you finish. And even when we please to so believe that we can win this. We got what's underneath. You're all about that image. We never even stop at the top. No limits. Champions. And we're the champions. And we're the champions. And we're the champions. So bring it on. Williamson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lukenus certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable.